Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. Come on, what about it? Let's put our hands together. Come on, let's praise him. Amen. Come on, let's give it up one more time to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's in the house. He's in the house. Amen. He's here. You know, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. I don't care what you came in against and what opposition is against you. You're in the house of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is here, and he just wants you to know uh, that uh, he is here to help you through whatever you're facing. Hey, my name's Mark. I'm the lead pastor here. We just welcome you. I want to look into this camera right now and just say welcome. Can we just hear the, those that's on campus, put your hands together and welcome those watching online. We love you. We love you. We really do. And whether this is your first time or if you've been a part of us for a long time, we just are welcome. And I know if you're here on campus, behind, I promise you, behind the, those, those, those ugly masks is a smile. <laughs> I promise you that, right? And we're happy that you're here. And uh, this is just a season that we're in right now. We're, we're just excited that you're here. I know... Uh, can we just give it up for the team that uh, I know I've been out for the, you know, just, just kind of out of pocket for the last few weeks. Can we just give it up for the team that has consistently just moved forward? Amen. 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 We, we're so proud of them. And uh, I'll be back in the swing of things next week. But it's an honor of mine uh, to introduce to you for the first time I know I hear it move church. Uh, I... Um, uh, I'm just excited about, and listen, you better buckle up because this dude is a firecracker. And, and so I'm just telling you, you better buckle up. Uh, you know, Matt Austin is from Houston, Texas. I got to sit down and talk to him last night. He's a pastor's son, although he's about 20 years younger than I am. Uh, we have some similarities. And uh, I was just amazed at the testimony uh, that he has. I got a chance to get to know him last night a little better uh, than I did. And uh, Matt, we're excited that you're here. Can you put your hands together and let's give Matt a Northern Virginia welcome. Come on up, Matt. Glad you're here, bro. Hey, can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise today? Come on. Man, it feels good in this church. Some churches you walk into and, man, it is just dead and dry. But, man, I, I, I believe y'all know who Jesus is. Come on. Y'all sound good. Most of y'all look good. <laughs> I read somewhere one out of every three people is good looking. So just look to your left and right and say, it must be me. It must. <laughs> I'm the proof of that statistic. Just kidding. Y'all all look good, even with the mask on. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm honored to be here. And welcome to everybody that's watching online. We're going to pray that you get saved in Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. We're thankful that you're with us this morning and, and joining in. And uh, all of those that have made it here today, I'm excited to be in church with you. Our church was out six months, six months. And we just kept, got back three weeks ago. And it just feels good to gather with the body of believers again. Come on. But I'm excited to be with you. I give honor to your pastors. Thank you for trusting me with your pulpit and, and with this wonderful church. And I'm excited that you're listening to me this morning. And I believe that God has a word that's going to change your life. And if you're ready for it, say amen. amen. If you got your Bible, go with me to the book of Acts. Go to Acts 27, verse number 14. If you'll give me 20 minutes this morning, raise your hand. 20 minutes. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Come on, we're going to be here till tonight. Works every time. Acts 27 verse 14 says, Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. And the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. Matthew 14. Turn with me to Matthew 14. One of my favorite passages in all of the Bible. Matthew 14 verse number 22 says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. 
And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land. And I want you to look at this last part. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. We read one portion of Scripture where Paul finds himself in a storm. The Bible says they gave way to the wind. So they let the wind carry them. They begin to sail with the wind at their back. And we read here where the disciples get in a storm, and the Bible says they were sailing against the wind. So in one portion of Scripture, the wind is with Paul, carrying him. And in this portion, the wind is against the disciples. It's a storm that's threatening to sink the ship. I want to preach to you this morning just for a few minutes from this thought, whichever way the wind blows, whichever way the wind blows. The year was 2008. And the month was February when a whole lot younger and, and let me just say a lot less intelligent Pastor Matt Austin uh, was convinced by an equally intelligent group of my friends that the best way to celebrate my 18th birthday was to go to a great, magical, amazing place called Skydive Spaceland and jump out of a perfectly good airplane. And at the time, I thought it was a great idea. If you've ever, anybody ever went skydiving? Raise your hand. Come on, if, if you've ever jumped out of a plane. Y'all are smart. We got one over here. We're the crazy ones in the room. What I remember about that experience, uh, the first time that you go skydiving, is you have to watch hours of preparation videos, like four hours of videos. And 10% of those videos is spent learning how to skydive. The other 90% are just telling you all the ways you can die by doing what you're about to do. And I remember after that four-hour session, I was more scared than I've ever been in my life. But I'd come too far. It was a moment of truth. My friends were with me. They were expecting me to jump out of that airplane. And so, you know, all right, we're ready. And, and they bring that waiver over. That's the last thing you do before you go up. You know the waiver. You know, the one that says, if we kill you today, you can't sue us. <laughs> I don't know how I'd sue them anyway if I got killed. But I was like, that sounds like a good deal. So I sign the waiver, and we get in that plane and get up in the sky, 10,000 feet. Terrifying. And I had the privilege of going last, which means I got to watch each and every one of my friends go first. And I don't know if they live. I don't know if they died. I don't know if they got raptured out of here. I just know they gone, and I'm next. Come on, can I get a witness in Jesus' name? <laughs> and the first time you go, you go strapped with an instructor to your back. And I, I think this guy got the hint pretty quickly that I wasn't going to jump on my own because I was fighting him. He was pushing me towards the edge, and I was just had my feet planted. Just none of these things are going to move me. I'm not going <laughs> out the side of this plane. But we get up to the edge of that plane, and, and I remember looking out and, and just the scariest sight I've ever seen in my life. And and the guy on my back, he, he's, he's finally like, okay, I'm going to have to jump for this kid. And so he jumps, and, and the, what I did was let out a word. And, and let me preface this by saying I was not particularly saved at this point in my life. Come on, can I get a witness? Anybody, anybody ever not been saved before? Come on. And so what I said in that moment was a four-letter word that I just thought effectively described my emotions in that moment. But what I discovered was once I got my big mouth open, the force of the wind was so strong that I couldn't get my mouth closed. So I'm falling from 10,000 feet like this. <laughs> couldn't breathe. And it felt like an eternity, but in actuality it was probably just a few seconds till I got my mouth closed. And survive. Man, it would have been something if I died skydiving in the air. That probably would have been the first time in history somebody died in the air while skydiving, and that would have been me. But I narrowly <laughs> escaped that fate. But what I learned through that experience is just how powerful that wind can be when it's blowing against you. Nowadays, they have these indoor skydiving places. Anybody ever done that before? Yeah, more people have done that because you're smart. 
And if, those, if those places were around whenever I decided to go skydiving, I would have done that first. And, and the difference is, if you've ever done them before, as opposed to you jumping out of an airplane, which you're falling and causes the wind to blow against you, in these indoor places, they literally produce a wind that begins to carry you up. So in one instance, you're falling with the wind against you. And in the other instance, the wind is carrying you up. In life, we're going to go through seasons when it seems like the wind is against us. In life, we're going to go through other seasons when it seems like the wind is at our back. Just know in life, there's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times. We need to know after we get saved, there's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times. Just because you know Jesus doesn't exclude us from the storm. When we meet Jesus, we're not all of a sudden storm proof. But you got to know that storms are coming. The wind is going to blow. And the question that I've come to ask us this morning is how do we respond to the winds of life whenever they begin to blow? Whichever way they're blowing. If the wind is with us, how do we respond? If the wind is against us, what is our response? And, and particularly, as believers who are following Jesus Christ, how does our Lord expect us to respond to the wind? Not long ago, uh, I went by Hobby Lobby, and I picked me up a wind chime. And, and you know it's a saved wind chime because I got it from Hobby Lobby. Come on, somebody. They love Jesus at Hobby Lobby. This is a saved wind chime. It completed step four of M track. Come on. It's going to be ushing next week. <laughs> so I went by Hobby Lobby and I got a wind chime. And I did a little research on wind chimes and, and I found out that it was the Chinese in about 1100 BC that were among the first to truly appreciate this song that a wind chime makes. And they began to masterfully create these beautiful wind chimes that would sing songs and melodies whenever the wind began to blow. We read about the disciples who found themselves in a storm where the wind was against them. We read about Paul who found himself in an instance where the wind was carrying him. And we've asked the question, how do we respond to the winds of life when they're with us or when they're against us? What is our response to the wind, and, and this morning, uh, you thought I was the guest speaker, but I, I feel like I just want to let this wind chime preach to us for a few minutes today. What I love about this wind chime is that it doesn't matter to the wind chime which way the wind is blowing. The wind can blow from the north, and this wind chime sings. The wind can blow from the south, and this wind chime is going to sing. Because this wind chime was made it was constructed, it was created to produce a sound. And Psalm 148 and verse number 5 says, Let all things praise the name of the Lord because they were created at his command. And God sent me here from Houston, Texas to tell somebody that whichever way the wind is blowing in your life, our response is to praise. Whichever way the wind is blowing in your life, our response is to worship. God is looking for a church like a wind chime that will stand in the face of adversity and say, none of these things are going to move me. Whichever way the wind blows, we're going to praise the Lord. Come on, where are my wind chimes at this morning? Take 10 seconds and just do what you were created to do. Come on, he gave you hands to clap. He gave you a tongue to speak his praises. He gave you a voice to shout. He gave you feet to dance. Do what you were created to do. Just respond to the wind, whichever way it's blowing. If you're in a good season, this message is for you. If you're in a bad season, this message is for you. What I love about a wind chime is the wind chime can't tell the wind no. <laughs> wind chime don't have a choice. It was created to produce a song. Some of us, man, it's a rough week and we lose our worship. <laughs> it's a difficult two weeks and we lose our praise. We tithe and God hadn't opened up the windows by Wednesday and so we're ready to give up. 
Wind chime can't tell the wind, no. When the wind starts blowing, the chime starts singing. Come on, God's looking for a wind chime that says there's two times to praise the Lord, when I feel like it and when I don't. Come on. And if you fall in one of those two categories, you ought to be praising God right now. Hey, if you feel like it or if you don't, it's a great day to praise the Lord. Because what the enemy wants to do is steal your song in the storm. If he can steal your song, he can steal your victory. The enemy wants to tell you that it's over, that Jesus has forgot about you, that God's not going to do it, and he wants to steal your song in the storm. But you got to make your mind up that I'm going to sing whichever way the wind is blowing. I I choose to trust the Lord. I choose to believe that even when I don't see Jesus, he's working my situation out. That's why we don't lose our worship. That's why we don't lose our praise because he's worthy when we don't see him. I was thinking about that story. We read it, and I'm going to get down here where I can really see y'all good. That story where the disciples get into the boat, they get out on the water, and the Bible says that the storm began to pick up. The wind was blowing against them. The waves were crashing. And you, you know it was a bad storm because these guys who had spent their life on the water were scared to death. It was a bad storm. And Jesus was nowhere in sight. They didn't know where he was. All they knew was this storm is bad, and it looks like this boat is about to go under. But while they were being buffeted and crashed against and struggling against the storm. They had no idea that while they're going into the wind, Jesus is off in the distance, slowly but surely working his way towards them. And the Bible says this, that Jesus came to them walking on the water. He didn't have to do that. If Jesus wanted to, he could have snapped his fingers and showed up on the bow of that boat. Jesus chose to walk on the water. This is what I believe. What was the biggest problem in their life in that moment? Those waves that were trying to take them out. That storm that was crashing up against their boat. That was the biggest problem in their life. Those waves. And here comes Jesus walking on top of the waves. They didn't know it when the storm picked up, but the biggest problem in their life was already under the feet of Jesus. I've come to prophesy that the biggest problem in your life is already under his feet. The biggest issue you're dealing with is already under the feet of Jesus. When you can't see him, he's got it under his feet. I don't know what you're going through today, but God is working it out. I don't know what you're dealing with today, but you got to make a decision today that I'm going to sing like the wind chime until Jesus shows up with my miracle. I choose to trust the Lord. I'm excited today because God said where two or three come together in my name, there I am in the midst. The Lord is in this room. And because he's here, that means we can touch him. And worship grips the heart of God. I believe before we leave this place that you can praise your way into a miracle. I believe that before we leave this room, you can shout your way into a miracle. (laughs) Praise the God said, I inhabit your praise. When you begin to praise me, I step down and I inhabit that praise. I I thought about in the Old Testament, Elijah tells the prophets of Baal, he says, I I want you to come make a sacrifice. He said, and and we're going to find out who the real God is. Is it Baal or is it my God? And he says, whoever the real God is, is going to answer by fire. And, and you know the story. And, and the Bible says these prophets of Baal come and they began to sing. They began to shout. They began to dance. The Bible said, said they were prophesying. They're having a church service. But the scripture said there was no answer. Nobody answered. Their God didn't have a chance to answer them. But we shout, we sing, we worship, we clap because we know that our God can answer. Come on, I'm telling you, God can answer you. When you begin to praise him in your storm, when you begin to worship in your storm, he's able to bring your answer because there's no other gods but him. We could get in a plane today and we could go to Saudi Arabia. And I could take you to the green dome. Where there you can see the remains of the so-called prophet Muhammad. Because when Muhammad died, he stayed that way. 
We can get in that same plane and we can go to Candy, Sri Lanka. And I can take you to the Temple of the Tooth where they believe they got the relic tooth of the so-called Buddha. You can see it because when Buddha died, he stayed that way. But if we got in that same plane and we went to Israel, I could take you to the tomb where the Romans put Jesus, but you wouldn't see a body because Jesus may have died, but he didn't stay that way. Our God is alive. He's not one of many. He's the one and only. He's not a king among kings. He's the king of kings. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But we're not going to wait for one day. We're going to confess it today that Jesus is Lord. Come on, wind chime, hop to your feet if you're able and confess it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say it is so with a shout. Let the redeemed of the Lord say it is so with a clap. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ten seconds. Ten seconds of praise. I feel something moving. I feel something shaking. I feel chains falling off. Hallelujah. For the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. That's what we're doing today. We're wrapping ourselves in the garment of praise. When you do that, heaviness falls. Depression falls. Addictions fall. Insecurities fall. If you'll praise the Lord. I thought about Peter. Peter's locked up in a jail cell. And the Bible said he was asleep. Y'all remember that story? Peter's in the jail cell, and, and they're having a prayer meeting for him at Mary's house, praying for Peter. God save Peter. God help Peter. And, and here's Peter. He's locked up. And he's so comfortable in his jail cell, the Bible said that he was, he was sleeping. Think about that, because, I mean, we know about Paul and Silas. Y'all remember Paul and Silas? They get in that jail cell. They're locked up, and they wasn't sleeping. The Bible said they began to praise and worship and shout. And God set them free. Here's Peter, and he's asleep in the jail cell. Sometimes we can get so comfortable with situations, so comfortable in our obstacles that we just are asleep in them. You ever been comfortable in sin? Woo. You ever been through a time in your life where you just were asleep to your sin? I, I love that he's asleep. Here he is. He's, he's locked up in bondage, and he's just comfortable. God's telling somebody today, it's time to get uncomfortable with being in bondage. It's time to get uncomfortable with the, what the enemies put on your life. He's sitting there, and the angel, the Bible said the angel shows up, and, it, and the angel strikes him. Psh, wake up, Peter. Y'all remember that? He didn't, like, shake him like, hey, hey. He said he struck him. Psh, wake up. I, I, sometimes God will let obstacles come your way to just wake us up. Come on, anybody ever been through something that woke you up? Peter, wake up. But I love this. This is what he tells him. He says, Peter, put your shoes and your cloak on. Wrap yourself in your cloak and follow me. The angel says, Peter, take these prisoner clothes off. Put your clothes on. Because you may be in prison today, but God's got somewhere great for you to go. I'm telling someone, it's time to take those prison rags off. It's time to take that depression off. It's time to put the garment of praise on. Because God's about to form a jailbreak into your destiny. Come on, wake up, Peter. You may be there today, but you won't be there forever. God's about to set you loose. Hallelujah. I heard a story. <laughs> I heard a story about a little country church. The mayor was coming into town. The mayor was going to go to their church on Sunday. And the pastor was so excited. The mayor is coming. But then he started thinking about Jimmy. Jimmy was the crazy praiser in the church. Pastor said, my God, I'm going to have to have a conversation with Jimmy because Jimmy's loud. <laughs> he may scare the mayor. He says, Jimmy, Jimmy, I appreciate your passion, Jimmy. He said, I appreciate what you bring on Sundays. He said, but here's the deal. The mayor is coming, and, and he doesn't know the Lord, and, and it may scare him. So, Jimmy, can we tone it down just for one service? <laughs> Jimmy, can we just chill a little bit? And if you do, I'm going to get you a brand-new pair of cowboy boots. That's what he told Jimmy. Jimmy's thinking, man, whew, that's going to be tough, but I love some boots. 
He said, I think I can do it, Pastor. And so Sunday comes, and from the first song, first song they sing was Jimmy's favorite song. And he started sweating. Just beads of sweat, just getting real nervous, thinking, I gotta get the boots, I gotta get the boots. Don't, don't, don't do it. Service goes on, and when the pastor gets up, the first thing he did was share Jimmy's favorite scripture. Come on. Pastor began to quote the scripture, and, and Jimmy, right in the middle of the service, hopped to his feet and said, Pastor, boots or no boots, I've got to praise the Lord. God's looking for a church that says boots or no boots, blessings or no blessings, good times, bad times. We will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, come on, whichever way the wind is blowing, stand to your feet in this room. Give God a great shout of praise because oh, he's worthy. Boots or no boots. I know it hasn't worked out the way that you thought it would, but God's not done working on it yet. Your present doesn't have to be your future. Your today doesn't have to be your forever. God can give you a hope. God can give you a future. God can change your life. In 2008, I was sitting in a jail cell with a second degree felony facing 20 years in a state penitentiary. My life was over. And I looked up to this God that I've been preaching about. And I said, Lord, I deserve to be where I'm at. Everything I've ever tried to do on my own has led me here. And my life is over. I said, Lord, but if you can take what's left of this life and do something with it, I'm going to live for you for the rest of my day. And can I tell you that this God that I'm preaching about found me in a jail cell pulled me out of that place, gave me a hope, gave me a future, and he can do the same for you. It's never too late for Jesus. I speak it into your life that it's not over yet, that the finances are coming, that the opportunities are coming, that the miracle you've prayed for is coming. If you could see Jesus now, he's walking on top of that situation. If you could see our king now, he's already worked it out. I speak it into your life. Man, I feel like God wants to release miracles in this room. I feel like the Lord has an answer for you today. There's someone in here, you were just about to give up. But God brought you to this church service today to hear that it's not over yet. You were just about to give up on your song. Give up on your commitment. Give up on coming to church. But God said, don't you give up too soon. If you could see me now, I've got your miracle. Renew your strength today. Find your faith again. Fight the good fight. Paul said it. He said, I ran the race. I finished it. He said, I fought the good fight. Every day is a fight for the faith. Every day is a fight to hold on. But this is your day to say, I'm not giving up on the fight just yet. I still got a little bit of fight left in me. Whatever you're going through today, whichever way the wind is blowing in your life, our response is to worship the Lord. When we worship, we're saying, God, we trust you. When we praise him in difficult times, we're saying, God, we know you're faithful. Even in the difficult times, we know that you're consistent, that you're in charge, that you're in control. This is what God wants you to do today. If that wind is blowing up against you, if you're in a storm and you're fighting for your life, the best way that we fight is to worship the Lord. And today is your opportunity right now to say, Lord, I trust you. We're going to sing a song in just a minute. And I want everybody in this room, like that wind chime, whichever way the wind is blowing, I want us to respond in praise and respond in worship and know that God is still in control. If you're in this room and that's you, close your eyes. Stretch your hands up to Jesus. We're going to sing this song again, and I believe it's a perfect song for this moment. Whatever you're going through, wind chime, let's give God a great praise today. And let's worship from our hearts. Come on, let's let that song come out of our hearts all together, church. Whichever way the wind is blowing, our response is to sing. Come on, I feel peace in this room. I feel victory in this room. I feel the joy of the Lord in this room. Hallelujah, Jesus.